beautiful people this is Deanna with another video on becoming that wife and today I am sharing how I got through four years of marriage as a wife you know usually you see videos of the couples talking about communication and all that other stuff no I'm gonna share some real deal I got my notes right here as we are on our way to wait stay tuned to the end to hear our special announcements but I am taking y'all all along as I'm sharing my tips so this is my beautiful husband my beautiful daughter is back here and this is our four years of fourth year of marriage so yeah stay tuned all that good stuff and make sure that you like this video subscribe join the fam on this channel I share pretty much how to become their wife hashtag Proverbs 31 and yeah just stay tuned first tip that I will share with you as a wife is consider the marriage before the wedding. You want to be a good wife, it sounds good, but you really got to consider the emotional, the mental, the spiritual support that you have to uh, sustain. Yes. And the reason why I'm saying that because in these past four years, you would have thought that cooking and cleaning is what makes a wife win. That is far from the truth. That is not obligated in a marriage, but we'll talk about that in the uh, future. But as of right now, consider what kind of wife you want to be, consider what kind of marriage you want to be, and really start working on it as you are working towards your wedding. Keep your wedding simple, by the way. Nobody teaches this kind of stuff, and that is why it leads to my next tip. Have a prayer life. Make sure that you stay tuned to the end of this video. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not waiting for the picture perfect. Hi, Hi. So I had a whole thing, at least I thought I did. I don't have the mental capacity. And most likely you already know, we are moving into our first apartment. We did a walkthrough through the apartment we will actually be living in. They have to rip up the floors and stuff like that. Awesome. We're just gonna focus on the bones. <laughs> but that's not what you at this video for. You are at this video to learn how to get through the first few years as a wife successfully and happily. I'm just gonna just vlog through this video for the next few weeks. It's gonna be the next few weeks for me, but it's just gonna be a few minutes for you, a few seconds. So I believe I stopped off at the tip of having a prayer life. I know this sounds simple and like, okay, you know, whatever. No, I mean, I'm serious, you guys. I'm talking about crying prayer on the knees, giving it to God type status, like prayer life to the max, warfare prayer, interceding prayer, that kind of prayer, breaking general, generational curses prayer. I'm not saying this uh, kindly. I'm not saying this sweetly. I'm not saying this gently. Have a genuine warfaring prayer life. Certain things is going to manifest, interfere, try to come to the surface, and it's going to fight against you guys. It's going to fight against your marriage. It's going to fight against your family, especially when you have generational blessings over your family. Is the listen. Have a prayer life. See what I mean? See what I mean? I'm so sorry for the noise. I'm so sorry. I'm a full time mom. I want to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And plus, with prayer life, that's a conversation with God. And having a relationship with God gives you a chance to vent, express. You need to let it out. And it also allows you to lay it down to someone who is listening and who cares and who wants to fix it. So before you go vent to your girlfriends, before you go vent to anyone else and start expo expressing how you really feel express to the lord angry crying all of it tell on your husband if you have to i learned that from my first lady do what you gotta do my daughter is doing some things that i'm not aware of of course stay tuned <laughs> i packed up our kitchen back in december here go one my daughter's on it and i thought we were moving me, my mom, and my husband into this uh, single home, which was zoned in a duplex. We was approved, but the landlord ended up donating. And that was a whole journey itself. So I think I'm gonna express that story because I learned so much spiritually. And this is not what this video is really about. I just wanna just take y'all along. But yeah, I'm just going to continue on vlogging. This stuff is crazy. So I'm going to be unpacking to pack. So the third tip I have for you guys, do not vent to your girls. Basically what I just said in the last tip about prayer, I mean literally do not vent to your girls. I did it a lot of times. You're gonna make your mistakes, you're gonna do it. 
be honest. But when you do it, be aware of your emotions. Be cautious and learn from it. And do not get upset with them if they don't perceive it the way you do. So like for instance, you were mad at your husband for you know whatever reason. Plus trust me, you're gonna be mad. And you went to your girlfriends, your girlfriend's gonna be pissed. And they're gonna not understand why did you go back to him? Because you made a commitment. And they may have this impression towards him. They may not like him for a little while, you know. It will pass by, but it's gonna be a while. It's just, it gets messy. It just gets real messy when you went to your girl. If you have to express what's going on in your marriage, I would say really pray first. Really let it pass by. Let the emotion, what you're saying, pass by. Really do it out of a place where it's like a joke or you're laughing about it or you're like, girl, let me tell you what my husband and I was going through just a month ago or whatever. Like, do it in a way where it's a girl talk and not a venting moment because your girls are going to probably get tired of it. They're not going to want to hear it. You want to keep your relationship with your girls healthy. And that goes to my next tip and it's going to mingle with my next tip is to have your girls time. But please have your girls time and don't use your girls time because it's going to be probably limited as you become a mom, as you become a, a family woman. It's going to be limited so you don't want to use that time and better I guess. You want to use that time laughing or have a cocktail or a lemonade or you want to have a spa day. Get your foot massage, get your nails done, whatever it is, you want to spend it doing that, not talking about your relationship problem. You know, you want to give people hope. You don't want to have them leaving you like, oh my gosh, that girl talked too much about her marriage. I can't do this. You want to have a girl's time. You want to spend time with your girls. Be a girl again, be a woman, which is another reason why you need to download my free guide. So <laughs> just maintain that and don't bring your marriage with you everywhere. So Make sure you have your girls time and have genuine good laughter with your girls, so. So another tip I will highly suggest is to be your own cheerleader. Ladies, wives, excellent wives, sis. My husband is my number one cheerleader. I'm gonna be honest with you. But the fact that he believed in me so much, I had to get the courage to start believing in myself if I had to be dead up. My husband believed in me since 2015. It is 2022 and now I created my LLC. I mean, I had to go through life to learn what I like to talk about and learn more about myself and go through healing and deliverance. But I realized I had to be my own cheerleader. I had to hype myself up. I had to talk to myself and say, D, I have to believe in me. Like it really has a lot to do with me and my belief system and my faith in myself. That just goes back to like, can't find happiness in other people. Like my husband is amazing. He really encouraged me to do a lot. But if you can really, really believe in yourself, be your number one cheerleader, hype yourself every morning because even with that, it's gonna overflow into your family. It's gonna just be a beautiful atmosphere. It's gonna be really, really dope. So really believe in yourself. I just came from getting the mirror. That joint's gonna be so nice. I'm gonna do a DIY video on how I'm gonna do a border on that thing. So I did not plan to record, but you gotta make moments count. And yesterday, we got approved for another apartment that I was like, I'm sorry, I gotta reject you guys. So I'm just so hyped that we got the apartment that we really want. It's smaller than the other one, but I like the location and the community feel, so I can't wait till y'all see it. So stay tuned, subscribe, all that good stuff. So anyways, y'all did not come on this video to hear about my story. So the next tip I have for you is basically piggybacking from the last one is to love yourself. Make time for yourself as much as you wanna spend time with your husband. Make time for yourself as much as you wanna spend time with your kids. Make time for yourself, spend time with yourself. Get to know yourself, Get to be aware of your emotions, Get aware, be aware of how you feel. Just really understand you so you can better understand the person you're with or trying to be with or who you desire to be with. You have the time to spend with God. I feel like it's not fair for the other person to deal with your ish, to be honest with you. I don't curse, but I do say ish. I feel like that is unfair for a king, a good man to come into your life. Either you miss out on the opportunity or he is carrying your baggage when he really don't need to. So you need to play your part 
if you are single, you need to play your part and get your ish together. Cut your butt stink too. And it's some healing and some deliverance that need to be involved in this situation. Although he may want to be there for you, but he should not have to. So really, really try to work on yourself. If you are married or if you are in a relationship, really take that time with yourself. Just tune in, not the whole chakra talk. I'm talking about talking to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Let that healing and deliverance take its place and cast them spirits out girl we're gonna talk some real stuff let's talk about faith we talk about faith not all the good stuff we're gonna talk about the stuff that we need to strip from generational deep generational strongholds so that's my truth as of right now so yeah so really spend time with yourself really love on yourself so you can overflow in love i don't know if my makeup is so your love can overflow into your family into your kids into your business into your life it was, it's a beautiful thing my next tip for you guys is to be forgiving and tender-hearted. I'm a stubborn piece of work and I'm so much lighter now. I'm so much tender and gentle now. But stubbornness is very rooted in me. And I know it is for you guys too. So that's why I'm saying this, is to be tender-hearted and forgiving. It makes your life so much more better and gentler and tender and beautiful. You're able to hear the birds chirping more. You're able to hear the butterfly, see the butterflies better. Like you just see life so much more clearer when you get rid of stubbornness and anger and bitterness and stuff. And when your marriage or your future marriage is really requires you to be forgiving more, it, you have to work on it. Even the Bible says for Jesus to forgive you, you have to forgive others. And that follows up with the tip that I'm gonna say next. You will have to grow first to see an overflow in your life. That's dead up. That really goes, and I'm talking to the wives, to be honest with you. If you're a man and you're listening, kudos, thank you, welcome. Um, hope you're getting some out of this, but this is really to the wives. I am a big believer of the Bible and the fact that I apply the word of the, uh, the words of the Lord into my life, I'm seeing it overflow in my life. And it takes a lot of looking in the mirror. So, like I said, the Bible says, a sanctified wife, sanctified her husband. Wife, excellent wife, striving to be an excellent wife. Really allow yourself to grow first before you see an overflow in your family, to see an overflow in your husband, in your marriage, in your, in your life. You have to be the one to suck it up. I'm gonna be so dead up with you. You have to be the one to suck it up. Take it like a champ and grow grow first child do not be stubborn don't do what he do don't be stupid just grow through it and just take it to the chin it's easier said than done though i ain't gonna hold you the more you tell it to god the more you give it to god quicker the fact it's, it's it's a journey you're not going i'm gonna be honest with you you're not going to get it the first time but if you acknowledge it that is hard that's something just know that's something <laughs> Beach. Okay, I know to me this is like weeks later since I picked this camera back up for this specific video. But I am in my new apartment, you guys, so stay tuned for the reveal of it. I'm so excited right now. I'm in the middle of my kitchen. I'm looking crazy, but I really want to get these tips out for you guys. So give me a like or a comment down below if you like this real life wife stuff, because for real, this is real life wife stuff. I got my daughter back here, somewhere over here, you see her? And I just want to just vacuum out my kitchen. I just did not want to forget about you guys. So I am going to continue with my wifey tips, and I want to make sure I get this video out for you guys. So. I hope y'all did not expect a glamorous looking girl because this is real life stuff, you guys. So. so another tip that I've recently just peeped that I don't have it on here is to admit when your husband is right and admit when you are wrong. To me, that is huge. It goes a long way. It's a form of humility. It definitely decreases the ego and the pride in the relationship. Another tip I have for you guys is do everything in love. No obligation should be evolved. No reason should be behind what you are doing. Even the Bible talks about everything should be in love or it doesn't matter. I remember the day when I really started cooking my husband breakfast. We were actually uh, not even engaged at the time. Of course, when you are dating someone, you do things naturally because as women, we're nurturers, we're nice. We love someone, we want to do beyond whatever. But I actually started getting convicted for playing wifey without having a ring. So I put my foot down and I stopped playing wifey roles, right? 
I stopped cooking for him because we was living together before we got engaged. I just had to really put my foot down as a personal journey. And I remember the day when I felt the love, not just him being someone who I want to marry, not someone who is I'm dating. This is my friend. So I know in this world, submission sounds very unpleasant. So I really want to talk about how I got past that. And I believe submission is a big role in a marriage. And when I think about submission, I think about respecting my husband. Just like you are submitting your application to college, to a job, you are applying to follow their rules. You are applying to meet their requirements. So when I think of submission, I am submitting in a way that I am going to respect my husband. Sorry, I had to use my phone now. I'm not going out partying. I'm not going out getting drunk and high. I'm not going out hanging with my girlfriends late nights and stuff like that. I'm not going out and coming home pissy drunk. I'm not going to cheat on my husband because I submit to my husband. I submit to the Lord. Yes, there are requirements that you have to meet. Not in a way like you must be six feet tall. It's, all, it's like love your husband, respect him, be patient, be kind. Um, all those things evolve caring about that person's feelings. And it's a process. I feel like marriage, you're always being taught something new. To me, submission is respect. It's not like I'm bowing down to him. And let's get this clear, you guys. Woman, respect. Man, respect. Woman, submit. Man, submit. All this is in the Bible. So read your Bible. Read your word. Do not let anybody manipulate you. You know the word as long as you read it. Another big thing that I feel like is important too, as a woman, have a vision and work towards it. It feels so good that I'm able to walk to my, my apartment and it's bright everywhere I go. My other house was not like this. Have a vision and work towards it. Cause as a woman, we are natural nurturers. We have to put our energy into something. Of course, our husband is wonderful. They're amazing. They're providers, they're natural providers, but have something that you can call your own to. I went through my learning lesson. I will have that video linked on why I am so passionate about the Proverbs 31 wife because she had her own. Although her husband provided, she also provided too. Sorry, there's an echo in here. Ever since I started putting my energy more into something that I believe in, I felt so good. That's why I'm showing up for you guys. It's bigger than just cleaning a house, making sure the food is done. It's bigger than just taking care of the kids. Is working on something that you believe in as a woman as a woman because you're still a woman you're not just a wife you're not just a mom you're still a woman and you need something to hold on to for that i have actually like seven more tips for you guys so i'm going to make a part two on this this is a long behind video and i know y'all probably didn't even make it this far in but if you did please let me know down below please subscribe by the way if you did make it this long I got plenty more to share with you guys. I just didn't want this video to be extreme long because I'm vlogging, I'm sharing, I'm talking. So stay tuned for the part two of this video and I cannot wait to see you guys. And thank you for watching this long.